adhesion prevention after endometriosis surgery. Clinicians can use oxidized regenerated cellulose during operative laparoscopy for endometriosis as it prevents adhesion formation. It is not reasonable for clinicians to use icodextrin after operative laparoscopy for endometriosis to prevent adhesion formation as no benefit has been shown. The guideline development group recommends that clinicians should be aware that other anti-adhesion agents, polytetrafluoroethylene surgical membrane, hyaluronic acid products, have been studied and proven effective for adhesion prevention in the context of pelvic surgery, although not specifically in women with endometriosis. Are preoperative hormonal therapies effective for treatment of pain? Clinicians should not prescribe preoperative hormonal treatment to improve the outcome of surgery for pain in women with endometriosis. The guideline development group recommends that clinicians clearly distinguish adjunctive short-term equivalent to less than 6 months of hormonal treatment after surgery from long-term greater than 6 months hormonal treatment. The latter is aimed at secondary prevention. The guideline development group concluded that there is no proven benefit of post-operative hormonal therapy within six months after surgery. If this treatment is prescribed with the sole aim of improving the outcome of surgery, as contraception or secondary prevention, clinicians should not prescribe adjunctive hormonal treatment in women with endometriosis for endometriosis-associated pain after surgery as it does not improve the outcome of surgery for pain. Is there a role for secondary prevention of disease and painful symptoms in women treated for endometriosis? Secondary prevention is defined as interventions to prevent the recurrence of pain symptoms or the recurrence of disease in the long term defined as more than 6 months after surgery. In women operated on for an endometrioma, greater than or equal to 3 cm, clinicians should perform ovarian cystectomy instead of drainage and electrocoagulation for the secondary prevention of endometriosis-associated dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, and non-menstrual pelvic pain. After cystectomy for ovarian endometrioma in women not immediately seeking conception, Clinicians are recommended to prescribe combined hormonal contraceptives for the secondary prevention of endometrioma. In women operated on for endometriosis, clinicians are recommended to prescribe post-operative use of a levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system or a combined hormonal contraceptive for at least 18 to 24 months as one of the options for the secondary prevention of endometriosis-associated dysmenorrhea, but not for non-menstrual pelvic pain or dyspareunia. Extragenital endometriosis Endometriosis has been found in almost every tissue type in the body. Symptoms depend on the site of the disease. Cyclicity of symptoms is usually present, at least in early stages, and may be the only clue that leads to the diagnosis of endometriosis. Diagnosis is usually made by histological confirmation, which is important to exclude other pathology, particularly malignancy. Additional imaging and endoscopic investigations specific to the location may also be used. Extragenital endometriosis can affect different tissues and body parts outside the genital tract. Pain is the most common presenting symptom, although a wide range of symptoms can manifest. Treatment will also depend on the site. If complete excision is possible, this is the treatment of choice. When this is not possible, long-term medical treatment is necessary. Clinicians may consider surgical removal of symptomatic extragenital endometriosis when possible to relieve symptoms. When surgical treatment is difficult or impossible, 
Clinicians may consider medical treatment of extragenital endometriosis to relieve symptoms. What other pain management strategies are effective for symptomatic relief of pain associated with endometriosis? The Guideline Development Group has retrieved and evaluated existing evidence on complementary and alternative treatment options for pain in women with endometriosis and concluded that the effectiveness of high-frequency transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, dietary supplements, acupuncture, and traditional Chinese medicine are not well established for pain management in endometriosis. High-frequency transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, dietary supplements, acupuncture, and traditional Chinese medicine are not well established for pain management in endometriosis. Treatment of endometriosis associated infertility. Are hormonal therapies effective for infertility associated with endometriosis? Suppression of ovarian function by means of hormonal contraceptives, progestogens, gonadotrophin releasing hormone analogs or danazol, to improve fertility in minimal to mild endometriosis is not effective and should not be offered for this indication alone. In infertile women with endometriosis, clinicians should not prescribe hormonal treatment for suppression of ovarian function to improve fertility. Is surgery effective for infertility associated with endometriosis? In women with minimal to mild endometriosis, the evidence summarized in a Cochrane review shows that operative laparoscopy is more effective than diagnostic laparoscopy in improving ongoing pregnancy rates. In infertile women with AFS or ASRM stage 1 or 2 endometriosis, clinicians should perform operative laparoscopy, excision or ablation of the endometriosis lesions, including a DCOLysis, rather than performing diagnostic laparoscopy only to increase ongoing pregnancy rates. In infertile women with AFS or ASRM stage 1 or 2 endometriosis, clinicians may consider carbon dioxide laser vaporization of endometriosis instead of monopolar electrocoagulation since laser vaporization is associated with higher cumulative spontaneous pregnancy rates. In infertile women with ovarian endometrioma undergoing surgery, clinicians should perform excision of the endometrioma capsule instead of drainage and electrocoagulation of the endometrioma wall to increase spontaneous pregnancy rates. The Guideline Development Group recommends that clinicians counsel women with endometrioma regarding the risk of reduced ovarian function after surgery and the possible loss of the ovary. The decision to proceed with surgery should be considered carefully if the woman has had previous ovarian surgery. In women with moderate to severe endometriosis, there are no controlled studies comparing reproductive outcome after surgery and after expectant management. In infertile women with AFS or ASRM stage 3 or 4 endometriosis, clinicians can consider operative laparoscopy instead of expectant management to increase spontaneous pregnancy rates. Are hormonal therapies effective as an adjunct to surgical therapy for treatment of infertility? In infertile women with endometriosis, the Guideline Development Group recommends clinicians not to prescribe adjunctive hormonal treatment before surgery to improve spontaneous pregnancy rates as suitable evidence is lacking. It is important to realize that clinicians should not withhold hormonal treatment for pain from symptomatic women in the waiting period before undergoing surgery or Medically Assisted Reproduction, or MAR. In infertile women with endometriosis, clinicians should not prescribe adjunctive hormonal treatment after surgery to improve spontaneous pregnancy rates. 
In infertile women with AFS, ASRM stage 1 or 2 endometriosis, clinicians may consider performing intrauterine insemination or IUI with controlled ovarian stimulation within 6 months after surgical treatment since pregnancy rates are similar to those achieved in unexplained infertility. Assisted Reproduction Technology or ART the guideline development group recommends the use of ART for infertility associated with endometriosis, especially if tubal function is compromised or if there is male factor infertility and or other treatments have failed. In women with endometriomas, clinicians may use antibiotic prophylaxis at the time of oocyte retrieval although the risk of ovarian abscess following follicle aspiration is low. Are medical therapies effective as an adjunct to treatment with assisted reproduction technology for endometriosis-associated infertility? Clinicians can prescribe a gonadotrophin-releasing hormone agonist for a period of 3 to 6 months prior to treatment with assisted reproduction technology to improve clinical pregnancy rates in infertile women with endometriosis. Should surgery be performed prior to treatment with assisted reproduction technology or ART to improve reproductive outcomes? In women with endometrioma larger than 3 cm, the guideline development group recommends clinicians only to consider cystectomy prior to assisted reproduction technology to improve endometriosis-associated pain or the accessibility of follicles. The guideline development group recommends that clinicians counsel women with endometrioma regarding the risk of reduced ovarian function after surgery and the possible loss of the ovary. The decision to proceed with surgery should be considered carefully if the woman has had previous ovarian surgery. For infertile women with deep endometriosis, we found no evidence to recommend performing a surgical excision of deep nodular lesions prior to assisted reproduction technology to improve reproductive outcomes. Menopause in women with endometriosis. The guideline development group recommends that in postmenopausal women after hysterectomy and with a history of endometriosis, clinicians should avoid unopposed estrogen treatment. However, the theoretical benefit of avoiding disease reactivation and malignant transformation of residual disease should be balanced against the increased systemic risks associated with combined estrogen and progestogen or tibolone. The guideline development group recommends that clinicians continue to treat women with a history of endometriosis after surgical menopause with combined estrogen progestogen, or tibolone at least up to the age of natural menopause. Asymptomatic endometriosis The true prevalence of asymptomatic endometriosis is not known, but between 3 and 45% of women undergoing laparoscopic sterilization has been diagnosed with endometriosis. Is surgery beneficial for incidental finding of asymptomatic endometriosis at time of surgery? The guideline development group recommends that clinicians should not routinely perform surgical excision and ablation for an incidental finding of asymptomatic endometriosis at the time of surgery since the natural course of the disease is not clear. The guideline development group recommends that clinicians fully inform and counsel women about any incidental finding of endometriosis. Primary Prevention of Endometriosis Is there a role for primary prevention of endometriosis? We only found evidence on oral contraceptives and physical exercise for primary prevention and their usefulness are uncertain. Endometriosis and Cancer What information could be provided to women with endometriosis regarding the development of cancer? The guideline development group recommends that clinicians inform women with endometriosis requesting information on the risk of developing cancer that there is no evidence 
that endometriosis causes cancer. There is no increase in overall incidence of cancer in women with endometriosis. Some cancers, such as ovarian cancer and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, are slightly more common in women with endometriosis. The guideline development group recommends no change in the current overall management of endometriosis in relation to malignancies since there are no clinical data on how to lower the slightly increased risk of ovarian cancer or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in women with endometriosis.